Hello everyone, welcome to a AMP um, guide video. It's it's not going to be very in-depth, I'm pretty new to it myself still, but I will try my hardest to explain to you what you need to know so you can get a somewhat decent AMP and get started on your way to killing Eidolons, fighting angels, angels, whatever you decide to do with it. Um, so to begin with, I'll explain to you the first amp you get, the moat amp, after unlocking your operator, is absolute crap. It's not very good at all. You can go to Quill Onko in Cetus, and you can buy the very first three parts to make a new amp, and it is ten times better than the moat amp. There's an ongoing theme with Warframe where every single thing you get at the very start, so like the Mark 1 weapons, the first amp, so on and so forth, is horrible. As soon as you upgrade it, the better. We'll move on to here, as you'll see. You can go to the equipment screen there and click equip on your amp. And then once you've crafted more amps, they'll all show up there. Just pick the one you want. Equip that BB, and then you've got arcanes here. The arcanes I would recommend um, would be Virtuous Strike and Eternal Onslaught. Virtuous Strike will give you 80% increased critical damage with a 20% chance for it to proc on every crit hit. And then there's Eternal Onslaught. When you fully deplete your energy, you will get plus 180% crit chance, which goes really useful with the Madurai first ability, which depletes your energy and with it maxed out, will give you plus 1000% extra damage, which is pretty good. So as you can see, Madurai is very useful for amps and doing damage. The other two really useful, well there's quite a few useful ones, but the three main ones I'd go for if you're just unlocking Madurai would be Phoenix Talons in the middle, which is just extra base damage, and Power Transfer here on the left, which will give you extra crit chance once you transfer into your Oblator. So that will just boost your damage even more. So now that we've explained the, the bare basics, we're going to go on to assembling an amp and um, how to do it. The, there, there's two places you can go. You can go to Fortuna and talk to Little Duck or you can go to Quill Onko in Cetus. Uh, in here we'll be going to Quill Onko just because that's where I go for all my stuff. Um, but you can just teleport over to him faster than running, especially trying to find the place. Walk up to him, you have to go to your operator to enter this door. Walk up to him, talk to him, and there's the amp assembly screen. Now you have three choices. You have the prism, which is the the primary fire. If you look at it this way, you've got prism, which stands for P for primary fire. You've got scaffold, which is S for secondary fire. And then you've got the brace, which is like a, a bonus uh, attribute. Um, we will go into more depth about which ones to pick, but for now it's just a simple explanation on um, how to get the parts for your amp and how to build your first amp. The parts for the different amps come from both Quill, Onko and Little Duck and Fortuna. So as you see here, we're going to work through each of the parts. So you've got the prisms from Quill, Onko, you've got the scaffolds from Quill, Onko, and then you also have the braces from him. So he has the first four and then Little Duck will have the next three to make seven overall. And then over here in Fortuna, you can get to Little Duck exactly the same as Quill Onko. You can press escape or pause your game if you're on console. Uh, and then you can teleport to Little Duck, but also the same as Quill Onko. You have to be in operator form in order, to in order to talk to her. From there, you can click browse layers and same again. Just search for the parts. Um, she has three prisms, three scaffolds and three braces. It took me a second to remember the name there. I kept spelling BL instead of BR for brace, but I got there in the end. After you've built your amp, you'll get a level 0 amp, just named Amped to begin with. You'll have to level it up to max level, and then as you see in the video here, I go back to Quill Onko, 
and I click other options and then click guild and what this will do is it will spend some standing like you guild your amp which will make it stronger but also reset its level and then from there you'll have to level it again but you will start gaining mastery for it at that point. Okay now that we've learned where all the amp parts come from, how to build an amp and how to guild it, we're next going to learn the the parts themselves. So if you look at this table here, there is one through seven, and then obviously you've got your prism, your scaffold, and your brace. Now you might have seen in you know chats in the in the Warframe servers where people might say, for example, the one seven seven amp is really strong. Now, I I know I was confused when I saw this, and I'm sure you were just as confused. But once you learn it, it's really simple. So by looking at this graph. If you were to see a 177 amp, what they would mean by it is the 1 would refer to the prism, which is the wrap whack prism. The 7 would refer to the scaffold, which on this graph here is the propa scaffold. And then the 7 again would be the brace, which would be the certus brace. Um, how these numbers are made up are they are in order of which one was released first, being um, the, the lowest tier one is 1, because that's the one you can unlock right at the start of the uh, Ostron standing, or the um, Quills standing, sorry. And then 2 would be the next lot of stuff you can unlock from the Quills. 3 and 4 are the next 2 you can unlock from the Quills. And then 5, 6 and 7 are because they were released after these ones, and they are now unlocked from Little Duck, so then they just go in order again. So 5 is the, the lowest tier you can unlock from Little Duck, and then 6 is the next one, and 7 is the next one. And it's it's so simple once you understand it, but I was so confused about it for so long. We will first look at the prisms and uh, we will work on which ones I personally prefer. Uh, not to say you can't use any other ones, but I will give you my personal opinion on which ones I prefer um, and show you how they work. So for the prisms first, we're going to look at four ones in particular which are number two, number four, number five, and number seven. These are the ones that I use. Um, these are the ones that I find to do more damage. I haven't, I, I mean, technically I haven't looked through everything yet, so there might be more, but these are the ones I've preferred um, and that do some damage. Now with my current loadout, with my Medulla loadout, before I use my abilities, some of them do very little damage, but as you'll soon learn, with Medudai abilities, there is such a big difference that you could make any amp strong, including the moat amp, with the correct items, uh, correct weapons, or sorry, correct loadout, the correct amps, uh, arcanes, and the whole Medudai setup as well. You will understand just how much stronger you can be. So here is the first prism we're looking over, the Swack prism. As you can see, although my loadout isn't the greatest, it's, it's not doing a great amount of damage. Um, and it's not doing, it's not really killing them. Um, and once we swap over here to using the Medulla ability, you'll see it does quite a bit more damage. Obviously, it's not crazy damage. This is only the first prism. We're just going to go up from here. Um, and as you can see, it does do quite a bit more damage with the Medulla. Our second prism is prism number four. As you can see here, it's an automatic prism. And it does decent damage without the Medulla effects. But it shreds with the Medulla. So here it is with the Medulla's first ability. Whack that on and it's one-shotting some of these about 60 heavy gunners in the head. Our next prism is prism number 5. This is very similar to the last one but it is burst instead of automatic. Again, not bad damage but not amazing damage. Um, aiming for the head is definitely better than the body does for sure. Now here it is with the Medulla effects, and as you'll see, again, it, it tears through them. These are only level 60 enemies, yes, but my Medulla is nowhere near maxed out, so this can get a lot stronger than what is seen here. Here is our final and my most favourite prism. This thing, without the Medulla effect, I say it still does decent damage, and it hits multiple enemies at once, but with the Medulla effect, Oh my, does it change so much. It just tears through them. And this is only with a half level to do that. Right. 
now that we've covered the prisms, we're going to move on to the scaffolds next. So there is, again, there's three scaffolds that I personally prefer. There are a couple I haven't tried yet, so that may change. But the ones I've tried so far that I prefer are scaffold 2, scaffold 4, and scaffold 7. These three for me do high damage and high area of effect. Um, some obviously are better for like Eidolons, for example. Others are better for groups of enemies. It depends on the situation you're in and what you need it for, but we'll go through each of them and uh, show you how they work. So here's our first scaffold. This is scaffold number two. It's like a small explosive. It's, it's not got a great area of effect. Um, it doesn't go very far, but it does do damage. Little amounts without the Madurai effect, but as I always say, wait for the Madurai effect. Now here it is with the ability. And it just tears through them. Now obviously with the other arcane I don't quite have yet, this would be 10 times stronger with that extra crit chance. Now next up here is my favourite scaffold. This is scaffold number 4 and it just shoots out a spinning disc of death. This is without the Madurai effect. This just tears through enemies. This is great for groups of enemies, not so great for bosses like Eidolons and stuff. Now with the Madurai effect, this will just destroy in seconds. It doesn't need an explanation, you can see how much damage it does. And our final scaffold here is scaffold number 7. This shoots out a small explosive. Well, I say small, it doesn't go very far, but it has a huge range. Uh, it will easily knock over your operator if you stand too close. Um, it will hit a decent amount of enemies. Again, with the Madurai ability, it does so much more damage. That is all the clips I have of the prisms and the scaffolds. Uh, lastly, we have the braces. The only two braces I'd really recommend at all. Um, you can have a look yourself through these ones. I'll, I'll, uh, you've got that picture back at the start that shows you all the effects of each of the braces. But the two I would personally tell you to use are brace number four and seven, the Anspatha and the Certus. The reason behind this is because these are the only two that give you any big difference. Um, the Anspatha gives you some extra energy, uh, the recharge delay is less, and you get more energy per second. And the Certus Brace, that will give you a higher crit chance, which is always nice. Especially with those extra arcanes you have to give you extra crit damage and crit chance. Uh, and any other uh, operator abilities you have with your Madurai. All that together, you can get some pretty high damage. As I say, feel free to experiment, test what you like. But that is my kind of scuffed guide, if you will, on amps and how to understand them a bit better. I'm nowhere near an expert. I, uh, I force myself to teach this stuff uh, and try to understand it, but I never do. But for the most part, that is amps for you. There's probably better guides out there, expert guides. Feel free to watch one of those if this isn't, doesn't satisfy you. But that's as best as I can explain. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions, feel free to just shoot me a message. Thanks, guys.